So I was thinking about what I want you guys to know about Lyme disease and about me, and many things come to mind. Um, first thing is, you know, I really don't need to hear anything in the way of, you know, you're so strong, you're doing, you know, so admirable that you're fighting this disease or whatever. It's not what it feels like, and um, I don't think there's anything admirable about it, because, um, it, you, you know, if you guys were in the situation, you'd have to do the same thing, so you don't really have a choice about it, and, um, you know, <laughs> I've complained a lot of the way anyway, so it's not like... It's not like I'm, you know, great at this or anything. And I guess in some ways it's made me sort of more comfortable about the idea of bad things happening in my life because I guess I see that, you know, this is a situation that if you told me about it in advance, I wouldn't have thought I'd be able to handle it. Especially some of the symptoms and the, you know, very, very strict diet that I have to be on for because I'm on long-term antibiotics and this sort of... The, very uncomfortable symptoms and, you know, shots in the butt twice, <laughs> four shots a week and stuff like that. I wouldn't have thought I'd be able to handle it, but, you know, it's sort of, when when you have to handle it, it's not a big deal. And so, I guess it makes me optimistic, you know, whatever happens to me in the future, I'll probably be able to handle it. And, you know, I guess we, we never know what we can handle till it happens to us. So, you know, that, that part is fine and, you know, Luckily for me, it's not really affecting my life that much. There are a lot of other people who have really like missed out on graduating from college or on going to college or who have like lost their partners or gotten a divorce or you know, a lot of bad stuff has happened to other people, but the way it happened in my life, it was, you know, kind of a convenient time. I was just about to graduate from college when I got Lyme disease and I um not to suggest that I, like, you know, made it up to, like, get out of having to, like, be an adult or something, you know, quite the opposite. It's been, it's been really terrible having it, but, um, I, I guess don't feel sorry for me because it's sort of, um, whatever, it's a life experience. I've always been sort of an experienced junkie. It's certainly a very, very interesting experience. I don't think you guys... Before getting sick like this, I, I don't think I had any idea, like, what a different world being sick can put you in. And it's really, like, uh, a different reality. It feels like going and living in a different country, and then you come back to your regular country, and it's, like, culture shock. Like, whenever I, you know, hang out with people without Lyme disease, it's sort of, like, culture shock for me. And... It's sort of like moving maybe to a third world country where a lot of stuff that you take for granted here just doesn't work. You just, no running water, you gotta walk a long way to get water, and you get sick from random stuff. It's, it's, that's just sort of, not a bad life, they're enjoyable things in other countries, in third world countries, and people are happy there, and whatever. It's just sort of a different, different type of life. So that's what I want you to know about what it's like. And, um, and I think, here's the, the, the ironic thing, is as I start to get a little better in certain ways, I start to feel like more and more upset about having Lyme disease because I, while you're very sick, it's very hard to imagine not having it, and it's just in your mind, you're sort of like, of course, it is the way it was always going to be, like, I am just a Lyme diseased person, you know, whereas as I start to get a little better and get out in the world a little more, I realize, wow, like, there are people who don't have Lyme disease, like, I could have been such a person, <laughs> so... That's kind of, um, I, I hear that a lot of people get a lot of grief about what they've been through, like, after they get better. They start to feel really sad about, you know, what their life was like, because they can, you know, by comparison, they can see how bad it was. But I guess while you're in the midst of it, it you really, you know, get used to it. Um, and a lot, a lot of stuff just feels like the way life is. And isn't it like that for everybody? And I guess I'm on a lot of forums online where everybody else has Lyme disease. Most of them have it much worse than I do, so I'm al I almost feel sort of guilty that I don't have it that bad. Um, what else I want you guys to know? Those of you who are in medical school, which is like a lot of my friends, um, you know, please learn about Lyme disease from the patient's perspective and 
please look at some of the recent research. You know, there's research about giving it to dogs and then giving them the equivalent of the human treatment, and then they they still have Lyme disease after that. And um, two weeks. The thing about Lyme disease being gone, two weeks of doxycycline. I don't know what person on crack made that up, but um, you know, I don't know. Write to me if you want to know about it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's not very, it's not that simple. And, you know, and also the testing for Lyme is not that simple. There are a lot of ways that people can test negative, and if, even if they have it. And same with a lot of other tick-borne infections. And also, there are some tick-borne infections that aren't always tested for, like Baronella people are coming to see. It's not just a cat scratch disease, but it can be tick transmitted. And I have it. And Brian Elkins life. So, yes, be educated about Lyme disease. And if you really want to make a difference in the world and have a practice where you don't have to accept insurance, uh, treat Lyme disease because people will come to you for treatment. Um, you know, because, you know, you know, even if they have to file their own insurance or whatever, just because it's so hard to find doctors who will, you know, treat us with anything other than steroids after a certain point or other than psychiatric medication. So that's my message to the doctors out there. Um, for everybody, especially those of you in the Northeast, be very careful to um, avoid Lyme disease. Um, I really don't even know that much about how to avoid it because I already have it and I don't really go out in nature very much anymore. So I haven't really looked into that, but I know that the spring and early summer are the prime time for getting it. I got it in May. I also know that um, your risk of getting a tick bite is much higher if you touch trees or sit on logs. I believe I got it a tick bite while I was sitting on a log. Because um, apparently ticks like sit on wood and I don't know. I saw an article about it. It was a newspaper article where they went out in some little suits and like touched trees and like did various activities in nature and they found that tree-related activities were the most risky. <laughs> so email me if you want the article. So yes, watch out for that. Check for ticks. But I think, you know, you can get Lyme disease from nymphs. You can get them, you know, from, you don't have to get a tick bite. M many people don't even notice a tick bite. Many people don't notice their bullseye rash. Um, so we got to be on the lookout for the symptoms. And, you know, anybody young having joint pain or memory loss or any sudden emotional changes like having a new onset emotional issues particularly anything like very absurd um, anger problems or really wild emotions or just not feeling in control of your brain go and get some testing and get that checked up on and you know don't hesitate to see a Lyme specialist if you uh, if you're suspecting issues because it can get so bad if you don't catch it in time. I'm having a rough time with it, even though I caught my Lyme disease three weeks after my tick bite. I might have had some of the infections, some of the other infections beforehand, but um, you know, some people go decades before they catch it, and they're bad off. Um, you know, it's a huge risk. Think of it. Think of it like AIDS. You know, Lyme disease can kill people eventually. The other infection, other tick-borne infections, Babesia can kill people, and so it's serious. And even if it doesn't kill you, it can totally wreck your life. And it's very common. It's probably sexually transmitted. Um, just watch out for it. Be educated about it. We should be very scared about this. We should be hearing about this in school. I don't know why we're not. Um, I mean, maybe we are. I grew up in Texas where it's not as big of a deal, but you can get Lyme disease in any con any any state in the nation. Um, you know, certain states are pretty bad, but anyway, so that's what I want you to know. And um, uh, God, I gotta stop this one. All right.